it's time now to do another interview about the Isle of Man general election later this year. And Jenny Farragut is now joining us, the leader of the Manx Labour Party. Jenny, you're putting your hat in the ring. I remember asking you about this when you joined me on the weekend debate, but you weren't ready at that stage to announce. So here we go, Douglas East. That's right, yeah. I'm declaring my intention to stand for Douglas East. Now, we were talking about the Labour Party and what exactly you were standing on. I think last time you were still looking for opinions from members. Have you now got a hard and fast sort of manifesto on this? Yeah, so our policy document is completed. We've worked really hard on that. Obviously, the way that it works is that every candidate has their own individual manifesto as well. Um, but the policy document is available, will be available to view very soon. So, yeah, watch this space. OK, so I always ask this, you know, if you're going to someone's door, if, if, if you're allowed to go to someone's door, what would be the main thrust of your reasons to elect you? Yeah, so um, the, I think the main issues that I'll be trying to bring up, and I think the main issues for the voters, uh, will be the you've got your, your standard ones of housing, healthcare and education. But I think what's really coming into the fore now and will be big issues for this election will be climate change and um, our, our response to that. And as well as I think mental health as well is it seems to be um, a major issue right now, as well as uh, alongside, I suppose, uh, suicide prevention and postvention. Now, what about government policies, though? What would you be saying is a way forward for the Isle of Man? So obviously what I'm leader of the Manx Labour Party and what we stand for is equality and fairness. So what our way forward, as far as we're concerned, is looking at um, policies that suit the majority of islanders um, rather than policies that suit um, a top sort of few or a top small percent. We would be looking to make our island fairer, um, share the share our economic wealth um, throughout our island more fairly, um, as well as looking at outcomes such as well-being instead of just economic growth. So how do you share that wealth more evenly? In taxes, in more uh, jobs, what? So that's one of the way, obviously, looking towards a more progressive tax system. And, you know, I really do think we have to be honest with our citizens um, as to how we're going to be providing for now and future generations, especially in the wake of the pandemic. But there are other ways that we would be looking to, to create a more equal society, which are around education and lifelong learning issues such as that, that I think people are really on board with. I don't think that they're contentious issues at all. Yeah, OK. Taxes then. Are you saying we'd have to pay more for better services? Most people know. Um, we do know that we, we, like I said, we have to be honest with our citizens in what we can provide. And of course, we can only provide public services if we have ad adequate revenue from our taxation system. Um, those two are, are completely inseparable. But what we would be looking at would be a progressive tax system, which means that the um, financial burden is shouldered by the wealthiest rather than um, the majority of people. Can you put any more meat on the bones on that? I don't want to get stuck in this one thing, but it sounds quite important because most people obviously don't like paying tax, do they? Right. So what we would be looking to do would be to change tax bans so that the wealthiest are paying more tax. At the moment, we have um, quite a lot of benefits for high net worth individuals. We want to be looking at that the system of high net worth individuals, what what benefits they bring to our island. Um, and if they're not bringing any benefits to our island, then looking to actually change our system, whereby people who come over here to use our tax system do have to bring a benefit. We might be looking to adapt the tax cap to make it more um, in line with progressive ideologies, that sort of thing. Now let's talk about Douglas East. It's uh, a very well contested area in the past anyway. What makes you think you're going to stand out from maybe, I don't know, it could be 10 candidates. It's quite a lot, isn't it, potentially in Douglas East? Yes, yeah. Um, I mean, all I can say is I was born and bred in Douglas East. Um, it's, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Dougie butty. That's, that's where I grew up. It's the first place that I voted. It's where I feel an affinity for. Um, and I, it's really genuinely where I feel like I understand the issues uh, because that was that's my that's my neighbourhood that's the place that I grew up, 
um, when where I spent most of my life. Um, and I mean, it's Douglas is my first love. What can I say? I'm a loyal person. Okay, well, I mean, as a constituency M- MHK, what are the particular needs of Douglas East? Do you think being from the area? The- the f- I mean, there are local issues such as, you know, parking, parking and parking in Douglas East um, and as well as housing being a big one. But I think as an MHK, the issues that are in Douglas East are the same as the ones that I've mentioned. Obviously, housing. Um, lots of people are um, worried about education, worried about health care, social care. Um, all of these issues, you know, did come up on the doorstep when I was supporting our candidate for MLP in Derby Ward, which is obviously Douglas East as well. Well, I'm sure when you said parking, 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 um, you haven't got an answer though, have you? I mean, nobody has, there's, there's not enough room for everybody. No, so we do, We instead of saying, we, you know, passing the book, I guess, or saying we don't, we don't know how to address this issue, I think that it's more about trying to look to different places, you know, look to global best practice, look to research, find an imaginative and creative ways around this instead of kind of just holding our hands up and saying we can't really do anything about it. Do you want to work more with the, the council? Would you see that as a, something you want to work at? Definitely, yeah. I'm hoping that we're going to have um, a number of progressive candidates from the local authority elections in April um, and definitely we'll be looking to work closely with them, yeah. How do you think the government's done over the, the last this last one with the Howard Quayle? I mean, we're still obviously in motion and we're in, in challenging times, let's put it that way, as we record this. Yes. Would you support the means of what he's done so far? Um, do you know, I think there's some questions to be answered. Um, and But I, what I really think right now is that, um, I, I mean, I would advocate for the people who are leading our response to the pandemic to be doing just that right now. Uh, Like you say, the situation seems to be very high level at this moment and it's quite frightening. And so right now I would be advocating for everybody to be doing our bit, pulling together to do our bit to get through this and for letting those people get on with leading our response to the pandemic. But don't get me wrong, I think that those questions need to be answered in due course and I'll be the first one to say so. And your views on the borders, I mean, you, you can give your party view or your your view, but what do you think about keeping them at the level they are and, and, and keeping us locked down as such, or nearly locked down? Yeah, I mean, the thing is that our border controls have been quite key. We know this, have been quite key in previously keeping our levels down. Um, I think that we... I think that we did need to look into some sort of um, further compassionate entry, as well as people who are Manx, young people who are Manx, who haven't lived away for very long, but still don't actually live over here. Um, I think that we should have had some additional um, thought given to those young people who are away from their home. Um, but other, other than that, really, our border policy has been has been good and is has given us the numbers that we've had up until now, sadly. And as a leader, I have to ask you this question, do you feel that you will get, a, a, not maybe a working majority, I mean that would be obviously everyone's ideal, but do you think you're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the next um, House Keys and Timwald? I'd hope so, yeah. I mean, I'm the reason that I'm standing is because of I, the way that I see things are going and I want to bring in more progressive policies. I have noticed, and I'm sure you have yourself, that the people who have declared so far seem to feel exactly the same way. So let's really, really hope that, I mean, let's not pretend that if you're in Timwald as one individual, you can't, you have to have a, a team of people who who have a, a, the same or similar principles. Um, so I'm really just hoping that we get that this time because we do seem to have um, so far with, I think, five candidates having declared and all of them are standing on a progressive platform. Finally, which department where would you see yourself being the most use at if you were invited into parliament, uh, into government? <laughs> That's a really good question because I think my background in terms of, um, so I'm a trained primary school teacher, I've worked extensively in social care settings and with children and families in many different roles. Um, So 
in terms of that, I would be looking to be involved with social care education. On the other hand, my personal and lifelong interest and area where I feel I know a lot about is, is of course, climate change and climate change adaptation and mitigation. So that would be DEFA. So it, it's difficult to say which one it would be. I do have a, a, a broad range of interests. OK, and just to finish with, will this be a full time commitment to you or will this be fitted in amongst other things? Absolutely a full time commitment. I mean, everybody, every single MHK is juggling their their home lives and and etc. Uh, I think more I'll, about work wise, it will be your but... full commitment work wise. Absolutely. Yes, um, because that's what the role needs. And that's, you know, you have to give you have to give your heart and soul in this job. I know exactly what it is expected as an MHK and I'm willing to give that. Mm -hmm.